in today's show, eating your way to the top, Lockie's food goals, and the importance of future-proofing the club. Hi, I'm Mark Pickley and welcome to The Crow Show, brought to you by the new Pork Belly Deluxe Burger, only at Hungry Jack's. Also joining us today, Belinda Sloan, who catches up with a player lauded by mates and loved by fans. Lockie Murphy epitomises the courage needed to play at the highest level. No one will forget his fearless attack on the footy in the dying stages of the most recent showdown. We'll hear from him shortly. Thanks Belinda. Now, when Lockie Gallant joined the Crows two years ago, he was given one instruction, stack on the weight. So he ate up big, six meals a day, all designed to build muscle and prepare his body for the rigours of elite football. 15 kilos later, he looks ready to fulfil the promise he's always shown. Beautifully judged that time by Gallant getting the feel for things. And his first showdown, that's a fine strike. And now let it all out as he puts for a second. In the end it fell short. Gallant's got it under the boot. Essentially winning the game since quarter time. Yeah, it was pretty exciting. Um, that was my first showdown, obviously, and yeah, big crowd, big moment, and it was a good win in the end, so pleasing personally to impact the scoreboard, but it sort of came off the work of the mids and the backs up the ground. You know, when they're bringing the ball in as well as they were that day, it sort of makes it easier for us forwards as a whole group. Skinny lad from Melbourne, but he's put that right through the middle. So yeah, obviously arrived at the club, um, probably a little bit underweight, um, underdeveloped, so I just, and yeah, I've just been working on that since putting on a bit of weight, um, working hard in the gym and you know I probably want to put on another five or six kilos still so focusing on that at the moment and hopefully in years to come. And on the second bite, Gallant. Look I just want to play the best footy that I can whether that's you know at AFL level for the rest of the year that'd be that'd be really nice but I understand that that's not always going to happen so whether it's sample level AFL level I just want to keep improving and as long as I can do that I'll be heading in the right direction been really pleasing to get, get a little bit of a run in the senior team and hopefully I can play a few more games this season. Lockie Gallant is one of a raft of young players who will be crucial to the club's resurgence. But there's no substitute for experience, so getting the right balance in the playing group is the challenge facing coaches and selectors. challenge going in week to week because obviously there's form and a lot of things dictate selection but it's definitely a factor you don't want to go with too many young blokes out there or you know relatively inexperienced team you, you need those older heads around them but on the other way you don't want to go too too experienced you need to keep you know getting new players through the team and, and give them exposure to the top level so it's such an important stepping stone for them to play really solid sample footy and then be able to sort of not only get in the team but stay in the team long term the older boys, I'm going to call them, have you know, spread their wings and, and got the young blokes under there and they really look after it and drive it where you know, the coaches and development's there to help sort of facilitate it if needed but to be honest we haven't had to do a whole lot. The, uh, the senior boys have been outstanding in that space and yeah, I think all the, you know, the leaders are going to get a crack at being captain which is, which is awesome, it was a great experience and to see Smithers hold the, uh, the showdown cup up after we beat Paul, that, that was awesome for him as a person but also for the club as well. It's really important that you have the next, I suppose, developmental deck stage of leaders coming through. The continuing improvement in the young guys is great to see. Stay with us after the break, the small forward with a huge heart. There's an old saying, some people put their heads where others wouldn't put their boots. And that's certainly the case for Lockie Murphy, who doesn't think twice before putting his body on the line, regardless of the risks. It is hot in the kitchen. Murphy, caught by Bolton, somehow to bury. Lockie, you play with a sense of recklessness. Was it always that way? I guess footy's not easy. I mean, it's a good contested sort of game and hits happen and stuff like that. I guess I always was smaller than everyone else growing up, and I still am, so. 
I used to always get crunched, but it depends who you ask. If you ask my, my mum, she'll probably say I do, but I mean, <laughs> that's just me and sort of the way that I play, I guess. That fearless commitment contributed to your serious neck injury. Has that experience changed you? I guess it's sort of woken me up to things outside of football more, like probably understanding my body a bit more. When I was younger, I just thought, you know, everyone was sore and, you know, I didn't really want to complain or, or whatever, but obviously that, that led to sort of having to have surgery so little things like, like sleep's been a big one for me. I, I struggled sleeping for a, a couple of years and I just sort of thought that was normal but Monday to Friday just around recovery I was really like you know aggressive in sort of trying to get better all the time but I probably didn't recover as well as I, I should have and um, that probably contributed to you know the neck injury a little bit. Murphy. praised you for your courageous attack on the ball in the final moments of the showdown. In hindsight, was that actually quite dangerous for you? Hopping in your car and driving somewhere is considered dangerous, like that's a risk. Look, if if anyone asks Rory, he would say that that's dangerous if you're in the car with me. Yeah, well, <laughs> well there you go. But yeah, there's risks associated with everything in life. Playing footy is just, you know, it shouldn't really be, you know, dangerous. As I said, it is hard. It's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would be playing it. But I mean, at that point in time in the game, you know, the ball was there. If I didn't fumble it in the first place, I wouldn't be in that position. But the incident itself, you know, Mays didn't actually hit me in the neck. It was more the whiplash that I sort of had from the hit to my, my body. So I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit nervous, but, you know, in terms of being dangerous, I mean, you know, footy's a, a contact sport and things like that happen. There's a new in the cult. How do you think the team's tracking? Yeah, I think we're going well. We're, we're definitely building last, you know, three weeks. We're, two wins and a, a, a lost Eston which was disappointing but um, it was a close result. You know, we still got such a, a young group and, and you know, young players like Lockie Scholl and Butsy like played 20 to 30 to 40 games now so um, and it's really showing out on game days. You know, continuity with, with the players and that and adding you know, some strings to our bow um, in offence and defence. We're heading in the right direction and hopefully we can get a few more wins. Thanks for your time today and all the best with the rest of the season. Thanks Belle. Thanks, Belinda. Lockie certainly sets an example to others. Now, players often have the best view in the house when it comes to those special moments. Let's call them whopper moments. This week, thanks to Hungry Jacks, Chase Jones tells Tom Duday how he witnessed a magic goal. Here for Chase Jones's whopper moment. I'm excited for this one. Fellow defender CJ, talk to me. What have you got? Uh, my moment is Eddie Betts' goal of the year against Gold Coast. I believe it was 2019. In the pocket, Eddie Harbrow, Eddie. Oh, oh, yes! Oh, yes! 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 You're a magician! Absolute ripper from the pocket over Harbrow. <laughs> he didn't even take a step. Oh, left foot checky to go with the left foot tour. We've got to change it to the Eddie Betts end. It's got to change. That was your first year? First year, so. first year with Eddie. So yep. talk us through sitting in the stands watching Eddie do his thing at AO and the, uh, the feeling of it. The, uh, the crowd was sort of a bit mellow at the time. Ten minutes into the last quarter and then Eddie just rips out this uh, magical goal and it just went ballistic. Erupted. Did he do anything at training that was at that level or better? And do you remember any specific moments in that regard? Well, as we walk off the track, the, uh, the race is on the, on the 50 metre arc. And the amount of times he just pulled out left foot barrels, just soared through, was just unbelievable. Ability if you go forward to do anything like that, you get a chance to pull out Chase's pocket at AO? Uh, very uh, more straight down the line, <laughs> let the other people do that. I'll, I'll do the simple stuff. <laughs> Stay down back? <laughs> yep, yeah, definitely. Good idea. All right, thanks for joining us, CJ. It's good to have you, mate. Thanks for having me. No worries. Every time you attend an Adelaide Crows home game, you could score a free Whopper from Hungry Jacks. Simply download the Hungry Jacks app for your chance to win. Still to come on the Crows show, a selection question for the coach and how the game can change in just minutes. Welcome back. 
After just five rounds of competition, it's obvious that if teams can grab the momentum during games, they can score multiple goals in quick succession. Rule changes and aggressive tactics mean that centre clearances are more important than ever. Thanks to Dr Jones and partners, let's get a clearer picture of how coaches deal with sudden shifts in play. Here's Crouch, handballing over the keys. He's got a bit of give and go about him and he goes short and delivers and Fogarty. The 6-6-6 rule is um, at set of bounces where we have six forwards and six backs, a pair in the goal square, and then you have four on ballers, including the ruck in the centre square bounce, and then two pairs of wingers on each side. And the ball up, Keys got there, flicked it out to Crouch, caught by Meek, back to Keys. Need a hero in a hurry here, the Crows, and it might be Jimmy Wright. Allows probably the mids to have a little bit more time without them rushing into the centre square, about two or three seconds to clear the ball from congestion. And now Dawson breaks away from White, has a bounce, looks up, might go the journey from outside 50, goes long and turns the volume up to 11. It is a lot easier to, to score from centre bounce, especially if you get some penetration from the clearance, allowing um, yeah the forwards just to compete one on one and if they win the ball, usually they're going to have a good chance of scoring. Didn't see much of him in that opening half. I think the way that the game's played and probably been coached, the game has opened up. It does happen a lot earlier in season. Hopefully it continues. I like to see the free-flowing game, and I think all the fans do as well. There's probably been a little bit more emphasis on, on ball movement and, and teams getting better at getting through opposition defences as well. And Walker's got it ahead. It's a goal. <laughs> the Crows have chalked up another first this year, becoming the only AFL club to have its own TV and radio show. So... Don't miss Sauce and Tomo with the Crows radio show on Triple M every Sunday morning at 9. This year the Adelaide Crows are asking you to silence the siren. Head to tickertech.com.au to secure your seats and cheer the team as loud as you can. Thanks to the club's major partner, Toyota, this week we've brought together Australian Olympic snowboarder Bell Brockoff and Adelaide Crows midfielder Jackson Haightley. Jackson and Bell caught up for a chat about what it takes to be an elite athlete and the different challenges in their chosen sport. Hey Bell, it's great to meet a fellow Toyota uh, ambassador and Olympian. Uh, very lucky to chat to you. How are you going? Yeah, good, good. I'm actually hating the cold right now. It's weird, I'm a snowboarder that hates the cold, so I don't know why I did it. But, um, so what made you get into snowboarding then, if you, if you hate the cold? Won a couple of ski school races back in the day and I thought it was pretty good, so I kind of just stuck with it. I'm keen to know, can you tell us about um, the period you had heading into the 2018 Games? I heard you um, had some injury setbacks there and you were able to, um, to push through that. So I worked my way up to world number one pretty quickly, which was very exciting. It was awesome to be there, but it's, it's so different to like chasing someone. I didn't know how to handle that, I guess. When it came to the World Championships, I was, I was one of the favourites. I made a mistake because I got, I let fear and lack of confidence get into my head and I made a poor decision, which mm ultimately cost me my ACL and mm. um, also I shot it at the world title. That was about 11 months out from the Pyeongchang Games. Came back onto snow when I was in, in four months time and then I got to the World Cup, time trial day, it was snowing hard, mm. you had to make a pretty big size jump and hyper extended my knee and did my ACL again. I wouldn't say it's uh, mental toughness or anything, I think I'm a bit of a psycho. Go. So you've been competing in um, the Snowboard World Cup individual events since 2012 and last year mixed competition um, teams were introduced and do you feel like you've helped influence that? I came into the sport and there wasn't a female on the team. Wow. You know, we don't have many females on tour. It's about 28 to 30, 32. And there's about 90 men, 90 to 100 men. Wow. I love the sport. I want the sport to grow. Mm. I really need females to come through just so mm. I can pass on my, like my knowledge and, and help them become better than I was. Because that's something that I truly believe is that, you know, you're coming through the sport. How can I set up this sport so it's better for the next group of girls coming through? And I find that personally really rewarding. After you finish up your, your snowboarding career, we need to get down to the town of the crows. <laughs> <laughs> Have a run around. Yeah, looking forward to continuing to see you do um, excel in your sport and yeah, hopefully can get to an event sometime. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm going to have to come down to Adelaide for a match. 
The game we love to play has its deepest roots in South Australia. And after the break, we'll hear how that history is celebrated. One woman's passion for football history has helped create a remarkable showcase of the game in South Australia, spanning 145 years. Chris Halbert, wife of former McGarry medalist and Sturt captain John Halbert, is curator of Sandfields Museum at Bowden. And for five months, beginning in June, the collection of photos, trophies, guernseys and footballs will be moved to the State Library on North Terrace for a special exhibition commemorating Sandfields anniversary. Thanks to Bendigo Bank, Chris shares her love of the game. My husband is John Halbert. He's been a, an absolute asset to here as well as me. Well, I knew how much memorabilia my husband had. Not that he knew how much he had, but I did. And then I knew that the Robins had some and the heads. And I thought, what's going to happen to it? So when I retired from my previous job, I wrote to the Commission and, and the Commission were fantastic. They said, well, what do you suggest? Just do it. Initially we found we were at Amy Stadium, which was great, but we grew so quickly that we were in various suites. So then we found this. So it's been terrific ever since. Oh, people hear about us and then they either want to give us their collection because they know about it and they want it to be looked after or something happens to them and the family cleans out the shed. Oh, we've got one item here which I'll show you after, a, a coin or a medal that was found in a paddock out of Yunta. The lady was walking along with her dog and she thought there's a bottle top but it wasn't, it was a little medal, 1883. They're doing what they always do, which is working fantastically. They're entering data, um, items that come in from people. So each item that comes in has a, a form specifically for that item. It has the donor's information. It has what the item is, what the year is, and the, all of that gets entered into the database. We've had a project where we got the channels seven to nine and 10, they're leftover tapes and films and we've been digitising that so we're up to 4,000 and something items and so there's an enormous amount of digitisation. Um, the Sandful History Exhibition will be at the State Library June 3rd and finishing on October the 16th. It's a long season but we are delighted to be able to do that because people in this COVID time need good news stories and we hope they come back many times. The Sandful is the oldest football competition in Australia, and in fact, one of the oldest in the world. Okay, let's turn our attention to finding a crow in the crowd. Remember, if you take a photo of yourself or a friend at a crows game and post it to social media, make sure you use the hashtag WeFlyersOne. Again, plenty of happy snaps to choose from. Let's settle on you. Please email faceinthecrowd at afc.com.au with photo ID and you'll win two tickets to Toyota's exclusive Hilux Hill at Adelaide Oval. Now, I'm sure you all have questions for the coach. And this week, thanks to Flight Centre, Daniel Love wants to know if the addition of good ball users like Dawson and Miller will help shoot the team up the table. Thanks for the question, Daniel, and I couldn't agree more. I think when we do get our pressure up in games and we're able to do it for four quarters, then we will compete with any side in the competition. It is tough to do that. Uh, you know, it's quite taxing if you're going to bring pressure all the time. And your point about around ball users is really important. Um, our ability at times to to you know use the football to build the ball up and and 
take on some uncontested possession is really important to us because you know, we understand how hard it is to go for 120 minutes flat out. So yeah, I think you're right, Dawson, you know, uh, with Wayne Miller, it's gonna be a, an interesting one. We're gonna be really cautious with our approach, um, but at the moment he's training really well. So um, yeah, looking forward to seeing what he brings to our team. Well, that just about wraps up the Crows Show for today. Don't forget to keep up to date with all the news on at the Crows Show on Twitter and check out the club's social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for your company and together with Belinda Sloan, I look forward to joining you again next Saturday at 1 o'clock. Bye for now. This program was proudly brought to you by the new Port Belly Deluxe Burger, only at Hungry Jack's.